start talking. No, not yet. Yes, you don't have no, to wait no, for the thing to No, don't tell me what to do. And now I can't. Hey, Never welcome made. to Ripping oh, the Rack oh, Podcast, oh, oh, oh. the longest-running weekly podcast on the internet about candle pin bowling. Welcome to episode 63. I am one of your quad hosts, Tim. With me today, as usual, we're going to start up north today. We've got the king of the north, Mr. Calvin Locke. How are you, buddy? How are we tonight? Uh, oh, all right. That's a crown for the evening. We'll, we'll yeah, call yeah, it back with crown. The crown. We'll yeah, it, sure. We'll it crown Tierra. Uh, yeah. With yeah. us, I, yeah. he is he is on top. Well, usually being on the bottom, but he might be on the bottom for you. He could be on the left. He could be on the right. Marky Pins, Marky, how you doing, buddy? I'm just a compass, man. I'm in every direction you want. Southeast, northwest, doesn't matter. We're still flying on the airline. How you guys doing tonight? Doing, doing, Yo. and we're bringing up the rear. He is the caboose. Hey, caboose is important. The, co- it the, is. Co- it the is. coastal caboose crusader. The coastal caboose <laughs> crusader. No, nah, we already have somebody with uh, three three letters in their name on the other show, so we that's won't on go the, there. Yeah, but how's on, everyone doing tonight? That's on the other show, though. That yeah. doesn't matter. He's a poopy head. Yeah. <laughs> Brandy, are you okay? He's a dinkle. Right? I'm good. Why is it? Well, I'm good. You seem, Man, you you just seem look, sad. Yeah, you look like no. you're upset. No. no. You're not I'm, sad? No, I'm okay. All right. Because I'm not sad. Good. I'm glad. I don't have I don't have my uh, American <laughs> Deuce bag outfit on today. <laughs> you know, but that's an interesting <laughs> shirt. <today. laughs> this one? That is an interesting <laughs> shirt. I love this shirt. What is it's that? Got, is that your pajamas? Uh, no, very, God, no. This was I wear, I wear this in Vegas. It's got palm trees. I don't know why Vegas. It's more like a Hawaii, like Hawaii stuff, because it's got a guy on a surfboard and stuff. Yeah, so, really, so instead of your American douchebag outfit, you just have on your traveling douchebag outfit. I have too. on my Caribbean douchebag outfit. Okay. A Caribbean douchebag outfit. I don't oh. have a hat and sunglasses on. Yeah, not gonna I, lie, I laughed my ass off when I watched the video you guys did. You last enjoy week. that? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't be here because like 20 people walked in and I was like, holy shit. So I had to miss the show. But you guys were hilarious last week. That sucked. I missed that show. Yeah, Damn. it was pretty funny. That was funny. It was yeah, good. we were hoping for your take on basketball. Yeah, yeah we thought yeah, that we really honestly, funny. we thought that was because you couldn't be there. We were like, let's change it up, let's stick hockey yeah. for this week. I appreciate. Let's that. do basketball for last week because yeah, I'm pretty only, sure your version of basketball would be like uh, Larry Bird. Well, yeah, I, don't know I, 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 I what I know about basketball is when I like go by and I see a basketball game on TV, I know how to press the button and change the channel. That's exa- <laughs> I, I, yeah. I respect. I just fell out of favor with it a very long time ago. I've tried and I just I, I like to play basketball. Don't get me wrong. We get like a three on three going. Absolutely. But watching it, I like watching tennis and golf significantly more. Significantly more. You know what? That we okay. So we're gonna add. I know we were doing five weeks of top ten lists on the other on the Friday show, mm-hmm. and so okay. it's gonna be the four major sports, mm-hmm. and then kind of every other athlete. But let's do six weeks, and we we'll do a top okay. ten list of favorite golfers. I okay. could fill that ten. You guys could do that without me. Mine, mine would be like Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods, all the way to the top. So Calvin is the Maki of golf. Well, we're going to yeah. have to wait because I, I am not I here next week because I am at camp. I'm on vacation. So I'm on vacation this week and I'm still showing up. Right, but I'm going to the very, as far, Tim, as far north as Tim is going, I'm going east that way. Like, Kelly's family is from the very edge of North America. Like you go to her grandmother's house and then you drive another mile and you're at the end of North America. It's the furthest east you can go. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's the end of the States right there. All <laughs> right. Well, we'll, we'll figure it out. But that's, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll, let's talk bowling. All right. Let's okay. Talk, specifically, let's round talk ball, candle pin bowling. Pins. At yes. sticks and things. Yes. And yes. kicking ball racks. And... and I'll tell you right now, <laughs> if you walk into a bowling alley and you've never walked into a candle pin bowling alley and you see it and you say, oh, is this the same as regular bowling? You will get attitude. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, you You'll will. Get, I get, get it <laughs> three to five times a week where as soon as I hear that, I go, oh, I'm free to mess with you now. 
Yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah. That's what it he is, goes, is that a regular cell phone? Are those regular <laughs> yeah. cars? See, hey, I have my, regular shoes. You don't. There's a song called Regular Man. It used to be by the band Spirit Animal, but apparently they had to change their name because Spirit Animal was offended people. So they changed their name to something like Record Heat or something like that. I don't know. They were opening right. for... I went to Theory of a Dead Man concert, and they were the opening act, and I was like, holy crap, these guys are really good. So I started following them. And then they were like, yeah. When when the cancel culture came in along, they they decided to be like, we're we're really ultra sensitive that we know that our name has Indian connotations behind it, so we're going to change our name from Spirit Animal to Record Heat. And I want to uh, be like, didn't that bother the climate change alarmists? I think so, but I don't think they were as worried about the climate change alarmists. Anyway, bowling. We were so the bowling, bowling tournament that <laughs> happened over the weekend. Tim, give us oh, a lowdown. Man. Wow. Bowling. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Why don't we gently segue to that? So, uh, okay. Lee, Lee Lanes had uh, had a tournament on Saturday. Um, the Spirit yeah. Animal Open. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. That was good. Good show. Good show. Good, good show, boys. Have a good, good one. We'll boys. see you next week, everybody. I'm ripping the rack. This, um, this was yeah. a random draw i think that ultimately it was supposed to be a random draw teams yeah. um unfortunately again being in the middle of summer they just didn't have enough uh, enough people so they changed it to a random draw doubles event uh number one qualifier mr keith bopray 640 which good is a, that's a pretty good score for lita yeah. in there that is a very good number good pretty, score especially as hard as keith throws feet. <laughs> uh Bovere was second qualifier, 634, Daly 627. Uh Luga Charna had the high single at 173. Um and then uh, McGinty uh actually had a great fifth string to to get up into to get up at 604. Um you know you're struggling when you throw 161 and you get 604. Oh yeah. Mm. But it's a good way to it's a good way to jump into the uh Jump into the playoffs. Yeah, it is. Big last string, little confidence going into the knockout rounds. Hell yeah. Yep. Hell yeah. Um, I don't have the knockout rounds. I only have the first round, uh, first two rounds, I guess. So I'm, I can't really I, – I don't know how they went, um, unfortunately, because I didn't see everything. I know Nick Norcross and Matt Nichols ended up winning. I believe they beat Matt Susi and Michael McGinty mm. in the finals. Oh, wow. Holy hell. See, and so, we were right, though. He had that big game in the fifth game, and he ended up making it all the way to the finals. He did. Good stuff, Michael. He did. That was he good. He had a hard time there over the Friday Night Pro League when we were in there. He was in that league, and he was having a hard time getting it done there. The yep. pins were just weird for his somebody who throws the ball like as hard as he does. Um I think he was partly responsible for half of the broken pins in the place while we were bowling <laughs> over there over the winter. But, uh, no, good to see him making some noise. He's on my Friday pro team. Uh, we actually just had the captain's meeting a couple hours ago. And uh, so that league's coming back, and Michael's on my team. So good to see the kid making some noise. Excellent. And Matt Nichols, young Matt Nichols himself, coming up and doing some good things in the last couple of years, man. Getting a dub with uh, Nick Norcross, who's not so young anymore. You're kind of a veteran by this point, dude. You're yep. not one of the young guys anymore. Tough shit. Deal with it. Gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> I've known Nicky since he was like this, man. I used to coach him years ago in the Wolven League. So it's been fun watching him grow up and have success. But Yeah. No, they, Matt Nichols, he bowled, he bowled well in the uh, mixed worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and he's, he's bowling well right now again. I, it's good to see names that... It's not the same names. You know what I mean? Yes. It, it's it's not. Parody is a good thing. You know what yes. I mean? Like when there's parody in sports, like not the same teams, all that. Like parody in bowling is a good thing. Oh, I think so. Yes. I absolutely, absolutely think so. Well, I mean, at one time you didn't, Tim. At one time you like to walk in and be like, okay, well, I'm going to win again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, but... I, uh, <laughs> I... Tim's on the late end of the yeah. career. I tell you yeah, right now, so now I walk now into a bowling thing. alley. 
I want to win every time. <laughs> I do. No, look, when I say when I agree with Brian by saying parody is a good thing, it is because <laughs> the more the more different names that are appearing in the playoffs and winning these tournaments, <laughs> the more, you know, the more entries you're going to have on tournaments that I get in so I can make more money when I win. Well, no, so, you just it, it's good for the game because you have your league bowlers who are like, hey, I can beat that guy in a league. And he made the playoffs. I, I can go try that. And then they go try and then they catch a tournament bug. And then it, it right. snowballs. You know what I mean? Right. Tim, you had me in the first half, not going to lie. I know. That mean? You, you had me in the first half, <laughs> not going to lie. And then you took it to a place where I thought you were going to take it to begin with. And I'm like, oh, okay. So he finished strong. Okay, good. Good. He finished strong. <laughs> It's good to know that some, sometimes I'm still predictable. Very much so. Yeah. It's it's poop I, jokes and boobs. You're very. Yeah. Predictable. <laughs> I don't I don't know any unpredictability with you, Matera. And, well, and, and necrophilia yeah. jokes. Can't forget yeah, those. It, yeah. Well, no, that oh, was new. That that one threw us all for a loop. Oh, yeah, that one was. God, but it was funny though. Anyway. <laughs> It was, Mark. You can't say it wasn't. No, it, it was. It, it was. So, it was. again, once that I, was Once a, I got over the shock of it all, yes, I did laugh. Yeah. A, a newer tournament that um, hadn't been run. I think Matt Susi is the one that ran it. Yes. I think he's the one that put it together and ran it. Um, so, I I really like what Lita Lanes has done this summer, kind of this spring and summer. Uh, they seem to be really trying to host a lot of tournaments really trying to you know it's smart if you think about it because the worlds are going to be there in three short months three it's all good dry runs three and a half months yeah so yeah this gives people a chance to get in there for some long distance endurance events especially where they had the 10 and the 20 stringer the 20 string is upcoming next month but they've already had a couple big events now they have this random draw double this is getting everybody that maybe didn't bowl in the friday pro league over the course of last season during the COVIDified season yep. that we had. Yep. This has given other people a chance to get into big major tournaments. It's given the people a chance to put their money where their mouth is. When all of them said, oh, if you had a 20 string or any other weekend besides Easter Sunday, well, here it is. Let's see what the turnout is in a couple of weeks when they have that. But it's given everybody a chance to get their feet wet um, at the place where the world is going to be in a couple months from now. And that's a good thing. I think every tournament, every house – that holds the world should have something like this going through the summer or maybe yep. a tournament in September that kind of can have you get in there for some, not just practice where you put your balls in the rack and you throw and you're only by yourself, but some organized practice, you know, some tournament level practice where you can get a good feel for the place, get a feel for the action, the sidewalls, what the wood does, how to get comfortable on that approach. You maybe not have bowled there before. Um, I know a lot of us have bowled at Lita in many, many events, but even still, this gives a lot of people a chance who maybe hadn't been there in a while a chance to come and bowl three or four separate events yeah. at the place. So it's only a good thing. And I know, I, you know, I know that they've said that they're getting new pins and new sidewalls. Um, I don't know when. I would assume soon because uh, Halloween. Hey, whatever. Look, I bowled on new, uh, one of my favorite places to bowl ever is Pittsfield Bowling Center in, in Pittsfield, Maine, when Sessa owned it. Yeah. He put brand new pins in one year. And the scores never fluctuated from previous years. Because he took care of the place, because he, you know, he did the plates because of those types of things that, you know, yeah, you had to work a little harder, but. I, I actually that's just, enjoyed that's the nature of new pins and that's fine. Yeah, and at I was least, I was purely joking. I well, no, at I least it's even right. all the way across. If you put in brand new pins and even you know, hopefully they put in the sidewalls too, because I find that's more necessary on new pins than doing your plates is. Um your plates help, but sidewalls where your action comes from. Period. Yep. I, I run a place, I've seen the difference. It's a it's a fact. So yep. if you get your sidewalls in there, even with some brand new pins. The numbers can still be very, very, very good. They can still be very good. You just have to be accurate. It's on you at that point. So and going back to what Marky said about, like, just real quick, Tim, having, you know, tournaments there, like when the Worlds was in Bangor every other year, that Can-Am the weekend before 
the week leading up to the Worlds was so awesome to have because you literally practice. pulled there about a week, you know, yeah. 10 days before you started the week there. So Yeah, but that eats shit because what if you couldn't get in the damn Can-Ams? There wasn't an open event that I could so, drive to Bangor and come bowl a 10-stringer. True, true. It was I was just saying it was, it was nice. If you were in the Can-Ams, right, it is an absolute beautiful thing to jump all over and go do that. There was a reason why I subbed a lot of Octobers in the Can-Am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you subbed Absolutely. a lot of Monday night Octobers and I subbed league up there. <laughs> and I subbed an occasional Monday night up there. Yeah. Because I had the world's coming up in beginning of November, and it's like, well, this is the time. So get let's practice get some Yeah. Heck yeah. You almost, uh, bowl, you almost bowl more strings and Can-Ams than you do all week, a week of Worlds. And you do that in two days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You gotta figure it's what sixteen strings. Sixteen, sixteen strings. Even if you don't make the playoffs, and then and then, and then if you, you make the playoffs, it's another six. I think it yeah, is five, five, six, five, five or six, something like that. Thirty-two to 16 it's about twenty-one. To four to two. Yeah, yeah. So twenty-one strings, and you may only bowl say twenty-seven all week of worlds if you don't make playoffs. <laughs> True. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm bowling twenty-seven strings to the week of the worlds. The team's in deep shit. That means that I'm bowling a lot. Well, maybe now, but years ago, you bowling 27 strings meant the team did make the playoffs. Years, well, years ago, yes, because years ago, I was younger and could bowl. Well, you exactly what I'm saying. You bowl nine matches in the 560. So if you bowl every every string, I mean, you bowl 27 strings, right? And my hand falls off. That's my a true finger. story. Chunks my, of Tim's finger fell off my, Saturday night of the 560 in the fourth match. Would you get leprosy or something real fast? No, yeah. it's the way I it's the way I hold the ball because I have Balances. I have my well I have my grandfather's hands, meaning they're just they're short, stubby, and whatever. So the way I throw a ball, they come off my pinky, the inside of my pinky, and the inside of my ring finger. And so a lot of times, right through here and right through here. Is where I get blood blisters. Bad. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. it doesn't matter the calluses that I've built up because they just, it doesn't matter apparently because I just get a ton of them. Yeah. And I, Saturday night in the 560 against Matt Cormier, and all of a sudden I started, I released the ball, and you heard uh, a couple of words come out of my mouth because um, the, Blister had let go, and nice. blood went. I, yeah, it was I, good. I enjoy that better when the blister lets go. Well, yeah, then, it's all, a, then it's all ooey-gooey all over your hand, and you get exactly. that yucky. Tim got some on the, on the lane, a little bit on the approach. The blood, know. little blood spots, you know. Yeah. Leaving and, DNA trails everywhere you go. Of course, we yeah. only brought five guys, which was dumb for that tournament. Yeah, Brian was yeah. Like, we also, You know what? Let's just say oh. the captain was an idiot. That day, yeah, that weekend, that is not the tournament to have five bowlers. Because not Are only did we have five again. bowlers, but we stayed in a we stayed in a. I wait. Can we say? Can we say great hotel? No, on here. Wow, no. you just did anyways. It it was with the one creep that Howard Johnson's right near the bowling. Oh, alley. right near the bowling alley. Oh yeah, that's the Sketchville now. Where oh, that's the Kingswood God. in Fredericton. No. No, 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 Moncton. No. I was going to say, you guys scared the shit it's because i the stated that Howard Johnson's in Fredericton like three times when we used to come up for the Dave Stewart. No. No, the Howard Johnson's in Fredericton is good. No, oh, okay. and right, so good. I had I had an air mattress, and then I had uh, what Eric Denault was sleeping on a couch, and Brian and Dave Glover had bed. Yeah, thanks for giving me a bed, you dick. You brought a, Hey. You I told dr- me to bring an air mattress. I wasn't sleeping on the floor, dude. It was it was a it was so, a, it was so a very to, long so, so back very to long. gross gross uh, finger things. So <laughs> uh, back in like 2011, uh, my first uh, 20 stringer. So I bowled the 20 stringer, went and bowled two league nights, Tuesday Thursday, bowled the singles at the provincials and won. So I bowled 11 strings because I tied one. Then I bowled 33 strings of Provincials, and then we made it to the semifinals. Uh, so that was another 30. That was another 42 strings. So I bowled uh, 118 strings in two weeks. Oh my God! Oh yeah. 
So the Monday Whoa. after, like, I actually, in the, the last match, I had my finger in hot water because it was so blistered and it had started to get infected. Oh, shit. And the Monday after the tournament was over, I lost my fingernail. Oh, my God. It had got wow. infected. Yeah, it had gotten infected under the fingernail, and I lost the fingernail. Oh, damn. Shit. Yeah. That was it was pretty How did the rest crazy. of your body feel throwing that many strings? You know once what? You stopped, honestly, like once honestly, you stop. Right. After the 20 stringer, after the 20 stringer, I was great. I was like, I could go, I could go another 20 more. Like I felt great. And then going into singles, I was great. And then end of provincials, I was like, ah, oh, I feel I feel kind of good. But then yeah, like Sunday night, Monday morning, I'm like, oh God, I am yeah, dead. That's when it all turned. Yeah. <laughs> that's when yeah. it changes. Yeah, the so, adrenaline was gone. A yeah. couple, of, couple of tournaments, upcoming tournaments that I'm aware of, um, and if anybody knows of any, feel free. Uh, there are rumors that Lita Lanes will be moving their 20-stringer okay. to, the, to the week before, to they the 21st. Listening. Who was listening to us? <laughs> um, I believe it was discussed this past weekend. Um, okay. I'm hopeful that they do because that obviously frees up people to not have to choose between one or the other. So are you going to bowl the 20 stringer? If it's the 21st, there is a possibility I might bowl the 20 stringer. We might have a Tim Matero sighting. Oh, I'll be impressed. We'll see. Brian it, it, will have to do some live commentating on that. <laughs> it, it depends on a couple of things like, um, Am I ready for a 20 stringer by then? And uh, what do I have going on that weekend? I don't know what's going on that weekend. My boss I mean, has even me if yet. you're not ready, what what's the worst that can happen to your body? You know, really? <laughs> Considering I already have a torn ACL, I guess I could tear the other one. Yeah, why not? Well, you got two. I mean, you might yeah. go yeah. for the gusto. Yeah. I mean, you at least it's not my both. left. At least it's not my left one that's torn, so I can still slide. Right. So yeah. You're fine. Tape it up, you know, a little duct tape, a little ibuprofen. Put, put a little salt on it. You'll be fine. You're so, good. Stop being uh, a baby. I will I will try to get some clarification from Alexis on this and see if that's been moved. And then hopefully we know by next week and we can announce it if she hasn't already announced it on Facebook. So cool. uh, stay, stay tuned because, again, uh, 1710 Sports Center is – having their annual international mixed doubles on August 28th and 29th. And if I'm hearing things correctly, the border could be open by then. Oh, snap. So mm. if the border's open by then. Bring your bowling balls. Bring your bowling balls, Canadian folks, and sign up. Not me. <laughs> no, I, I do suspect you'll have to be vaccinated to get over the border, would be my yep. guess would be my guess um yeah. so if you have not signed up for the international mixed doubles that is coming up august 28th and 29th basically one month away um always a good time always good tournament uh lots of fun so yeah giddy up. up uh pro series i know they recently had listed their tournament dates I yes. think we went over it last week. Um, for those that are on the fence, do it. Do it. I mean, yeah. seriously, right. just do, do it. it. What do you got to? Just, just what do you do got it. to lose? Do it. seriously. Just do it. Sign up, uh, especially the first event. The first event's always a fun event. It's the doubles knockout. You know, it's five string qualifier. I've heard good things about about Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. The changes they've made. The doubles events have always been the biggest events yeah. on the Pro Series. It, yeah. Everybody loves the doubles event. You grab your best bud. You guys go, you bowl five games each. The place is usually packed for the Pro Series doubles. Yeah. If they had a couple events in Maine, I'd probably make the trip. But, you know. <laughs> I have mentioned that more than once to a couple of folks like Freshy and Nate and those guys. Um Hopefully next year, maybe they might listen. I mean, got to remember that the 
tournament, the one time they came, what they would call Northern Maine, which is Augusta, they sold the damn place out. It was literally full. That was the random, random draw, draw doubles. Double. That place was random packed, packed that day. But they have 100, because they took, what, top 62? We had three shifts, and there was two, two, or, two or three, three lane. to a lane, 20 lanes, three yep. shifts. Yeah. place was packed that it was day. Gr- it was great. Yes. And then you and then you hear folks like yeah yeah we're not going to come back it's too far to drive. I know I keep beating that I know I do. Yeah. Jeff Surratt, I apologize I threw you under the bus last week you were not the one that said that I won't say who said it I used you as an example please my most humblest apologies to the all and powerful and great Jeff Surratt. <laughs> Fuck that. Dude he's Surratt <laughs> not the Fawns. <laughs> Fuck that. He's a damn good bowler, part. but he's not Arthur Fonzarelli, man. Oh, <laughs> I I say it. I am a friend. Jeff and I are friends. I'm good. Well, you were till that. Yeah, yeah. right. Not anymore. No, he's good. Jeff, Jeff, he's a, he, you know he's an okay bowler too. He's all right. Yeah, he's all right. If he if he keeps it up, he might actually make it in this game. Oh, maybe. he might. He might win a couple things. He might. I don't you know. Never know. Um, so again, reach out to uh, Pro Series Committee. I don't know who the hell's on it? I don't know. For, I think Freshy and Nate and Freshy and Nate. I don't. Know. I don't know anybody else. After after that, I have no idea who else is yeah. on that. There's also they have their own Facebook page, the Candlepin Pro Series. They post updates to that yes. all the time. So if you're interested in entry fee or uh, uh, whatever the tournaments might be, or if you do just need to ask a question of somebody who's on the Pro Series, or if you just kind of like. Hey, I don't know if I should ever do it. Yeah, you should just go do one. Mm-hmm. See where you stand. That's how a lot of us got really good, was just jumping into the frying pan with a bunch of people yep. who had already been there for years and just seeing where you stacked up. You can't yep. just wait until the confidence says, oh, I'm going to be better than everybody today. So no, sometimes you just got to get there and go do it. Yep. See where you stack up. Go do it. So I will say it. another tournament, um, it is full. Um, we have a full tournament? Oh. We do, well, it's a small, it's a small house. It's a twelve lane house, but Exeter uh, Bowling Lanes uh, is running their uh, mixed team uh, round robin scratch marathon tournament on September Sunday, September twelfth. Um, so there September, are some. And it's full already. Oh yeah. Full. It's, ex, it's Exeter. Is there a pro series the eleventh? The pro series the eleventh at, at Portsmouth, and then tw- fifteen minutes up the road. Is the twelfth is this a weekend in New Hampshire for bowling? Yep. Yeah. Um, as of right now, here are the teams. Uh, we have Amy Doobie. Uh, so it's two men, two women, by the way. Okay. Uh, so yeah. it's it's Amy Doobie, uh, Glennis, Tim Jalbert, and Joe Smith. You have Deb Regan, Blanca, Lou Renji, and Ed Woodside. Uh, Stephen, is it? I can never pronounce his name. Boat, Boaty, Body, Body, Stephen Body. Bo- Body. Yeah. Stephen Body, uh, Corrado Pani, Jess Stockton, Nikki McKeever. Uh, you have Sarah Duffy, Lori Lewis, Freshy, and Nate Lees. You have myself. Woohoo! Uh, Jeff Surratt, Sonny That's Rossi. why he read all the names off. That's why he's, yeah, really yeah, that's names. exactly why. <sighs> no, go on, continue. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, it's all about Tim. Oh, wait. We're not practicing for the roast tonight? No. I thought we were practicing for the roast. I thought that yeah. was tonight. Uh, I thought that was tonight. I'm... Wait, who who just muted Maki? <laughs> <laughs> Calvin did. <laughs> just so Tim could go on. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still muted. Nice. Go on, Tim. Uh, you, have, you have Mark Carrier, Brian Mayer. Kerrigan, Shannon Scribner. Uh, you have Dean Sullivan, Matt Susi, Becca Vestal, Linda Brunette. Matt Huff, Vanessa Huff, Christy Hapworth, Chris Merrill. Nick That's Norcross, good. Joey Lister, Sonia Johnson, okay. Sage Johnson. You have Dom Drake, uh, Dom Drake, Craig Holbrook, Faye Sawyer, and Sue Halloran. Uh, Peggy Donnelly, Andrea Keller, uh, Andrea Bailey, Norm Pelletier, Keith Beaupre. And then you have Kim Pelletier, Mario, Sean McKinley, and Sean Baker. 
So as of right now, those are the teams. And uh, sorry, oh, my my fourth is uh, my fourth was Erin Merrill. I don't know if she can bowl yet or not, but she is on the roster at the moment. So very yes. cool. That that will be a packed house. The reason yes. the reason I brought this up was because I I didn't look at like the prize money. And the prize money, I was like, actually, damn, uh, they're paying for twelve teams. They're paying three grand to the winning team. Holy crap! That's for four bad. people. For four Holy. people. Yes. Gee. Yeah. That's that's good money. A uh, thousand for second, eight hundred for uh, third, and I think fourth gets you money back, basically. Wow, so. that's pretty good. A Not third, bad. A, a, th- a third of the a third of the teams and three grand for first place. <sighs> I gotta get me a team. <laughs> it's full. Oh, I gotta get me on a team. You gotta get me. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm sure. I'm sure Jeff Surratt will kick you off. <laughs> well, it's my team, so uh, I'm sure Jeff Surratt will kick you off. <laughs> <laughs> the roast is not now. It'll be just that. It'll be just before that. All right, I'll get there. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, if you guys know of any other tournaments, if people want to get their tournaments on this, you know, on our podcast, uh, please reach out to us. Let us know. Uh, Ripping the Rack Podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Ripping the Rack Podcast. Get us the information. Uh, how about some lock letters? Lock letters. Lock letters. Lock letters. We got to work on that. Oh, my God. <laughs> My it's ears so are hard bleeding. over time. Yeah, it's I know. so hard yeah. over the That's lag. That's what and she everything. said. Oh, yeah. my goodness. She hates lag. Oh, oh she, she hates it's around. It. It's around. She, she hates lag. Yes. She hates lag. Oh, gosh. Everything's hates. running full steam, and all of a sudden it goes down to 10%. She don't like that. Yeah. Keep it fast. Yeah. All right. It's like when, it's like when it buffers. All right. No, you don't need any more. Let's go. Come oh, wait. On. No, I'm going to save that for later. Um <laughs> So here's here's an interesting question, and I'm, I'm not quite sure uh, how to answer this. So I'm going to start with uh, the Coastal Crusader himself. Okay. No. Perfect. <laughs> Next question. Next. Circle gets the square. <laughs> yes. I so want Brian, him to bring that back. I Brian, love that show. Back Hollywood Square. Tim, oh, what is your mindset when you're facing a tough opponent versus – a so-called easier opponent. There are no easy opponents. Oh, yes, there are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, there are. My, my, my thought process is just don't screw myself up. Just do everything I'm supposed to. Maki? That's all you can do. I don't look at it any different. I don't care who I'm bowling next to. It doesn't right. matter. Hit, hit the head pin, make my shot. Hit the head pin, make my shot. I don't change my mindset based on who I'm bowling at all. Do you get amped up? You know, if you're bowling, no, you don't want to. I don't want to change my mental state. I don't want to be like, oh, I got to bowl this guy or I got this guy. Well, well, no, no, I don't mean like that. Like, I, I, I guess what I mean is like, there are times if I'm, if I'm bowling, let's say, let's say league Mm -hmm. and I come in and all of a sudden they tell me I'm bowling against Jason. Maybe I might get a little more amped up because I know he's going to be amped up because that's just how Jason is. I let the match dictate it. Before I go into the match, I try not to get like the same thing. Like if you go in your league night and you find out you good example, Thursday night, we're bowling the pro league down in Woburn, the summer speed league. And I was bowling against Jonathan Boudreaux, Right. Um, nothing changed. We had a good, solid match against each other. But I would have bowled the same if I was bowling against anybody in that league. It, it, I still have to knock over more pins. And if I do, you can't beat me. I don't care how happy you are or anything else. I just look at my pin, hit my pins, make my shots, push the button. Hit my pins, make my shots. I try not to change my mental situation based on who I'm bowling against. I don't like doing that. That gets me out of my own personal rhythm. But that's just me. Okay, Calvin. Well, I, yeah, I guess it, it, if you want to think that way, I, I, I'd, I'd call bullshit on all of it because I think if you're going into, let's use, let's use worlds for example. If you're going into a match against Lucky Strike, you're like 
amped up. You're ready to go. You're like, all right, these guys are going to be pounding. I got to be pounding. Where if you're going up against a team like, I don't know, let's say two weeks notice, you know, from back in 2012, you're going to be like, all right, I'm going to knock down 112 pins and it's probably going to be good enough. Like you're, you've got a different mindset when you're going up against yeah, but then, bowlers. But then you go into it with that mindset and you go in and you get your ass handed to you by two right. weeks notice. Which, when you're not paid. Right. So learning those lessons through that years mm-hmm. has taught me that literally it doesn't matter if I'm bowling against a world record holder or a dude who's literally in his first world shaking in his boots that it's his first ball he's ever thrown. I don't look personally I, at this point in my career. Maybe I should have put that. I don't look at it any differently. Uh, personally, I don't. But some people do. I I struggle with this because I want to say that I don't change my approach. Oh, but you do. <laughs> it's just just the way of the but, world. But I I, I do. Like yeah. I know that if I'm bowling and I'll use league or worlds or whatever it is, Marky, I know that if I'm bowling against you, I know I need to be on my game. If I'm bowling against Calvin, I know I need to be on my game. Mm-hmm. Like it's not it, I don't I don't know as if I necessarily look at it like the question said an easier opponent because let's face it, when a bowling league it's a handicap league. Yeah. It's, it's I, all hard. <laughs> we don't have we don't have scratch leagues anymore up here. So for me, uh, we have the once a month league. That's scratch, but it's uh, once a month. Okay, I don't bowl in that, but I will be pulling in the Exeter once a month. Looking forward to that. That's going to be fun. Um, That's a really good time on Sunday mornings. You're going to really enjoy so. Yeah, looking looking forward to that. How come you don't bowl that, Mikey? Because I'm here at King of the River. When I'm oh, at the tournament right. on Sunday mornings. Yeah. And okay. Got, got to pay the bills. No, I get it. I yep. just. I, that's I, the only reason. That's literally yeah, the only paper, reason. Boo-boo. Yeah, I forgot about that. So yep. I want to, Calvin, I want to say I agree with Mark because yeah. I, I kind of, I that's what I try to do. Yeah. Um, And you know what? There is a little part of me like League on Thursday nights at Oakland Park, you know, and I'm bowling a. Bowling a guy with a 90 something average is, and I've heard Brian's heard them say it. I've heard them say it that they get so fucking amped when they beat me or when they yeah. beat Brian or yeah. that. I, honestly, I enjoy it. It's like, okay, that's oh, actually absolutely. pretty cool to see, yeah. to see these guys get so amped, you know, and then they have so much fun. If myself or Jason or Brian or someone throws like a 150, they're like, oh my God, that was so cool. Oh man, you know, and that's look, that's that's kind of fun. It's it's fun to sit back and see the person that still has that much enthusiasm for the game. Yeah. So again, I want Maki, I want to say that, but I kind of know it, that I do. I've just personally made that mistake many times in the oh, past. Yeah. I'm I'm not yeah. an emotional bowler. I can't. I'm not one of those guys that can bowl angry. I can't bowl. When I'm, when I'm too happy, I can't be like, oh, my God, I got to catch this guy. I'm going to start squeezing the ball tighter. I'm going to stop punching more half worsters. I've just seen me do it too many times. The longer I've gone in my career, the more I've just kind of leveled off with being too emotional, getting too high up or too high low. And that also includes going in to find out who I'm bowling next match or what I'm going to do. If I get too high going, all right, cool, I got this guy, no big deal. No, but like if I'm farting around with my buddies when we're bowling skins, that's different. But if there's like anything that really matters, I yeah, I don't I don't know as if I've ever sat back and said, oh, I've I've oh, this is going to be easy. And and I don't think I'm looking at it like that. I think for me, it's I, I I'm I'm a little more I guess I am I, I am a fairly emotional bowler in tournaments in the world. Yeah. Not so, not so much in league. League is. Oh no, it's you get you get fun with you when you're bowling. Like when you and Brian, if you guys bowled against each other, you guys would have fun. And but like mm-hmm. I mean, a regular kind of league night where you're bowling some random old guy team of like seventy or eighty year olds, and you're just like, oh yeah, this isn't fun. Like I'm, whatever. No, we right, just right. we just turn the jukebox on and really piss everyone off. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, that's, that's all. what we do. Okay. 
Um, Calvin, I'll start with yeah. you on this one. Okay. Oh. What makes a house a favorite of yours? Like when you're looking at a house, is it good like food? Okay. Honestly, <laughs> good food. Because if I go if I go to a bowling tournament, like, and I want to eat halfway through it, and all they have is bags of chips and chocolate bars or something like that, like that doesn't that doesn't you know get me going. Like Fairview, Fairview is one of my favorite bowling places to go because the food is incredible mm -hmm. and like bangor good place to go because their food is incredible so you know that's kind of one of my favorite houses is to go there because good food so let me ask you let me ask you this then what's what's an alley you like that others may not kingswood <laughs> <laughs> I, I know a lot of people don't like kingswood but i like kingswood um I don't know. There's not many bowling alleys that I, I guess, dislike. I go to, I, I enjoy bowling alleys no matter what. There's not, okay. there's, there's one that I'll never go back to, but that's just because of the, the lane conditions are hit or miss on each one. I have to adjust every time. I've never in my life had fallen over a, fallen over the line or gotten a zero on a mark until I went there. And I did it three times in one day. Yeah, those so, things don't happen. Yeah, no. No. Like, at this level, like, I'm, every once in a while, like, I'll throw a ball off my foot accidentally. It'll hit me in the foot and go in the gutter, but I'm an idiot. That's not because uh, I fell yeah. or overslid yeah. or something. That's because that's right. of your style. You're Because you bring right. your ball in real close to your leg, so. Maki, what about you? Uh, what's, uh, what's, what makes a house a favorite of yours? first thing when I get on the approach is the approach itself. Not the pins, not the lanes, the approach. If I get on a lane that has comfy, like beautiful resistance to my feet the way I enjoy it, and it's consistent time after time, I love that place. I can make the pin action work. Lita Lanes has some of the best approaches in all of candle pin bowling, in my personal opinion. Uh, Wuben Bowladrome, has the best approaches in candle pin fight me. Uh, but I, I also, I also really enjoyed being up at one seven ten. These places have to me, the approach, if I can't be me on the approach, I'm going to have a really hard time being me down with the pins. So yeah. to me, it really all starts with the approach. All the other things to me are secondary. I can deal with tough pins. I can deal with sloppy pins. I can deal with synthetic lanes. I can deal with wood lanes. I can deal with all that stuff. But if I walk in, and two strings into the tournament, my knee cracks, and I'm on one leg for the week. No. Yeah. Okay. How about a uh, how about an alley you like that others may not? Ah, uh, the tougher the better. Riverwalk. <laughs> Georgetown bowling lanes. No, a lot of people like the place now. It's not the old. <laughs> I don't yes. know if anybody's ever been around in uh, Massachusetts. There's a little city called Georgetown, and they have a place. Is six bowling alleys, basically in what anybody else would call a barn, uh, but there's electricity and stuff in there, so I guess it's like a modern barn. Uh, but they have six of the toughest lanes in all of Candlepin, and I love going there to practice. Uh, but that's a very obscure reference. I, I really don't have too many houses I don't like, or houses that I like that other people don't, because I don't know what you like and what you don't. But I prefer going the tougher the better. The better bowlers usually end up doing better, and you win more money there. Okay, Brian. Uh, consistency. The, okay, that's my big thing. I just want it to be the same all over the bowling alley. Like I don't want to bowl on lane one and be like, okay, well, I have to move a step back because it tilts a little bit. And on lane three, oh, you don't want to hit the left side because the plate's crooked a little bit. And I, I just want to be able to stay in the same spot. No, I'm gonna slide the same amount and get the same break if I throw the same ball. I'm not saying every time, but I don't want it to be like, okay, if I hit the 1-3 on 2, I'm going to get a break. If I hit it over there, though, on 4, i got to come in from the other side. i got to go Brooklyn because I'll leave. You know, I don't want to have to figure out how to change a style every lane. So consistency. Okay. okay. Definitely consistency. And this the ability to slide. When you're a dude my size, you have to know you're going to slide or you got to know you're going to stop. 
you don't want to make that decision in the point three one seconds you have when three hundred pounds is moving quickly towards a line. <laughs> fact. 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 Yep. So what's an alley you like that others may not? All play in Belfast. That's that full synthetic house, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, I've there's never uh, thrown there's, a there's ball there. Two old. They used to be owned by the same guy. One in Waldeboro, one in uh, Belfast. They've both now been purchased by two different people. Of course, Waldeboro now is Sammy's, home of Tim Matero's elimination win. And then Belfast was bought by the Dyers, and they've done a great job up there. The pins go now. It used to be really tough, but it's a fun house to bowl in. It's honest, and it is 100% synthetic. Uh, 100% synthetic. I will echo and say that there's, there's two things. Oh, laundry's done. Oh, laundry's uh, done. <laughs> Check, message the wife. Honey, oh. laundry needs folded. Um, what makes a house a favorite of mine? It, the approaches. It starts there. Um, I have to slide. I have to. My knees are bad. They've been bad for 40 years. So, because I, I grew up skiing and I grew up polling so two things that aren't exactly really good for your knees so um so for me i have to be able to slide and i have to know that i'm going to slide on lane one lane seven lane 14 whatever it is um and then to me it's 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 the lane conditions themselves like brian said it's it's i I can't stand bowling on in a house, whether if I can slide, but then, well, shit, this my ball really takes off to the left. Oh, that's because it's it's warped. Okay. Yeah. Oh my damn! I, I can't cry. I, I, my ball just can't make it up to the head. Then doesn't matter how much spin I put on it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that to me is is important. Um, I'm not a huge. I, I guess I'm not a huge issue with scoring conditions but just as long as it's consistent right it's, that's all i care about i just want consistent um i can get fun. my own goddamn way enough i don't need other things to do it too i agree <laughs> there's yeah, too many uh, variables behind the foul line to have yeah. other variables in the infrastructure screw you over as well yeah. yeah just give me a shot to be consistent from one end of the house to the other and i'll bowl there yeah i mean do i like Good scoring conditions? Sure. Of course I do. I'm, I don't. I like it. It's fun. Christ, oh, I, bowled, I, bowled, I bowled in, in Gardner, Maine for three years in a league. Oh, it was one of the fastest houses in the state. That was a lot of fun. It's a lot mm-hmm. of fun going in knowing that you're going to average 130 for the, for the night in the league. Huh. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, in an alley, I like that others may not. Uh, for me, Westport. Oof. I like I like Oof. Westport. That place um, is tough. It it is. It's it tough. But you know what? I can slide there. Mm-hmm. I never have had a problem sliding. Um, mm-hmm. That yes, wood from tough. the Mayflower is awesome. It held it up is. all this time. It, it is held up well. Um, you know, uh, Massachusetts, it's funny, is, is people bitch about academy lanes, and I bitch about academy lanes, but I like bowling there. I the place like is house. great. Pinfall's yep. a little quirky, but, yo, if they do the mm-hmm. decks up a little bit, it moves a little better than most. Every time I say quirky, the guy well, laughs in the corner. Welcome laughs. back, quirky. Welcome yep. back, quirky. Uh, <laughs> New Hampshire, I'm going to say... Probably Lita. I have a bowled a lot in New Hampshire. Lita Lanes, Lake, you know, Lakeside, um, the old London Dairy Bowling Center. I bowled there oh, once. Oh, I never got a chance to bowl there. I, I bowled there once. The place um, looked beautiful. But that's really that's 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 it for me. In in New Hampshire, I I've only oh, and obviously Portsmouth and Exeter. Mm. Um, but most people like Park Place. I, oh shit, forgot Park Place. Um. So, yeah. So, uh, we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Good show. Good show.
Um, we do have the roast coming up. Six more episodes. Uh, we have found that emailing the videos don't exactly work all that well. Um, so, Marky, do you want to? So, yeah. So we're going to do instead of sending your videos in an email, because we had something come up where one person's roast video had to be come out in what four or five different emails. Yeah. So let's try to fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate. I used to use uh, my Dropbox, my Google Dropbox. I'm going to turn that back on and get the link and we're going to put that in the description of the video. So when you watch us tomorrow being Tuesday morning, there'll be a link to my Google Dropbox. And if you have a video, you have a roast, you have anything that you want to say to any of us, say to Tim, even if you've never met us, say it to Tim, just say it to <laughs> let Tim know, even if you mm -hmm. don't know, just say something to Tim. The link to my Google Dropbox will be in the description of this video and on the Facebook post. We will make sure it gets out there. It'll just be easier for us. And since I'm going to be editing it all together, it'll honestly be easier if I just have it. Um, make it really good. I'll make sure Tim doesn't see any of them. It'll be the first time he sees them. It'll be fantastic. Uh, get me. Get Calvin. Get B. Get us. Remember, though, we're going to get you. We're going to get mm -hmm. you. Take the joke. Because we're going to take the joke. We're grown-ass men here. So you better be a grown-ass person, too, and take the joke when we get you back. Because it's all in fun. We love each other. It's fun. Nobody else is doing this, so let's do it. Yeah. Give us a good, solid roast video. 30 to 60 seconds if you do know Tim. 5 to 10 minutes if you don't know Tim. Just let us know in one way or the other what you think about the great Tim, <laughs> Tim Matero. God. Please let us know. What you think and other people that you know think about Tim Matero. We need to hear your opinion. Can I roast myself? <laughs> no, you're not allowed. Just like Brian's not allowed to roast himself. Wait, we, can we send in our... No, wait, because we're going to be roasting them live on the <laughs> we're show. We're going to be roasting them live, yeah. So can, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's going to be live. We can't put in alter ego videos. Like, I can't be like, like, Rock Mitchie. <laughs> we, we, well, Gim uh, Dadero might might have to. Gim Dadero, Gim Dadero might, might send make in a roast video. Yeah. He might have I to. He might asshole. have to send it. Uh, He's such a prick. Guy. He's <laughs> such a prick. But he deserves a spot on the roast video as well. So if Gim Dadero sends us a video, we will mm -hmm. gladly put that in. <laughs> My God, that's awesome. To the roast um, video, I think that's yeah, a great folks, idea. We don't. We don't need any salty people here. It's just all no. in fun. It's fun. Oh, with, good. It's no, a goof, and if you no don't know how things. to do a roast video or a roast in general, YouTube roast. Find right. out. Not yeah. posts. Roast. <laughs> the TikTok. You don't, you don't just get on and say, oh, roasts. you don't just get on and say, oh, he's a shithead. And I bowled with him once before and what a dick. No, there is an art to it. Yes. Watch the old Friars Club roast. Oh, yeah. I was talking about the Comedy Central roast they did not long ago. Yo, I'm going to say it a lot. The, the Comedy Central roast, they did of Justin Bieber. They destroyed oh, they, that oh man. God, was that so was good. so friggin' funny. Look it up the Comedy so Central good. roast oh my God. Justin yeah. Bieber, mm -hmm. and you'll oh, get an idea about oh, how to do it if you yeah. like the more modern style. Yeah. Um, uh, so definitely all, other, out. Yeah. all other questions, comments, concerns, everything else, please get, us, uh, get those to Ripping the Rack podcast at gmail.com. Uh, once again, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on YouTube. Oh, wait. Sorry. Strike that on YouTube. That's Brian's. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> Stepped on your toes. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, at Ripping the Rack Podcast. Uh, we do not have OnlyFans yet, uh, but we'll work on that. We're waiting for Their the right time. servers aren't ready. Brian, where else can they hear us? Well, they can hear us. So you already told them on YouTube, you asshole. But they can hear us on Anchor, Breaker, uh, Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and wherever else you want to pamper your eardrums every Tuesday and Friday morning. And you can catch Marky and the Coastal Crusader Brian on Sunday evenings, uh, Johnny Death Drop. So that's twitch.tv slash Johnny Death Drop. The dudes in Belts Chat Cast, they talk Rocky Mountain Pro Wrestling. Great stuff. And again, you catch us on Tuesday mornings and Friday mornings where we discuss anything and everything other than Candleton Bowling. Yes. Appreciate it, folks. Have a great week.